You're listening to What She Said on Canada Talks. Well, we've been talking about 3D printing for over a year now and how fantastic it is as having lots of potential, lots of creativity. But most of what we've been talking about is sort of hobby stuff. Experimental. Experimental. Yeah. And we've been waiting for a company that's actually going to turn this into a business. And so that's what's really exciting because today PetPrints3D.com is a business that you're going to be able to actually buy a product and have a 3D printed item in your home, but not just anything. It's It's got that emotional connection yep. to it. We're talking about your pets. And we actually have the founder, uh, Steve Corey, here. Uh, hi, Steve. How are you? Good morning. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about sort of this unusual process that you've created. So it begins, interesting enough, with people's personal photographs. So I love the fact that people are already involved from the very first step. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct, Chris, and the, the great thing about our, our process is that it's fully customizable, so our goal is to capture what makes your pet special, and oftentimes people have photographs that, uh, that show that. If they don't, it's something that we can create. So you're asking people to go through their photo collections uh, and pick up, I guess, really good images of their particular dog or their particular cat, and then they send them to your website at PetPrints3D.com, mm -hmm. and from there, you're able to extract if I understand correctly, an accurate computer model representation of this animal. Is that right? Uh, not 100% not correct, Chris. We do create an accurate computer representation of the model, but we do it strictly through artistic work. The photographs are references for our, our incredibly talented artists who then uh, draw the pet in three dimensions. And again, the whole goal is to capture what makes your pet special. We actually have a survey. We ask our customers and we ask them what, what pulls at the heartstrings and we want to capture that. Yeah, that's awesome. So, I mean, the, the end result is that you're getting a figurine that's not just a match of the breed. So if mm -hmm. you have a beagle, it's not going to be, oh, well, you know it's a beagle and therefore it represents your dog. No, it's your dog. It's got that scrappy chewed ear yeah. or it's got that <laughs> right. weird little patch of white that's just under the, you know, the left side that yeah. no other one. All that special that little stuff. lopsided kind of grin or maybe the way that the, the corner of the eyes look like little tiny triangles. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're doing. You're using the photographs as reference to make sure that you've captured all the little things that make an animal unique. Is that right? That's correct. And we've had requests for animals holding things in their mouth with heads at certain angles, tongues hanging out, ears <laughs> folded <laughs> over, sitting in certain positions. And, uh, and oh. we have the beautiful flexibility to be able to do that. And to create um, sculptures of pets that are long gone. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, that's the kind of the neat thing. Because you hear people talk about my first, my first dog. Right. And if you have those photographs, it's yeah. doable, right? It is an incredible gift idea, and uh, in fact, we have made models of pets from Polaroids, uh, pets that have, have been long wow. gone, and uh, I can honestly tell you I've never been in a business that evokes such incredible emotional reactions in people. Wow. People tear up uh, constantly. That's it's, amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and the actual, okay, so the, the 3D printing, if you were to Google 3D printing, most of the objects that you're going to see, they're kind of a plastic red or plasticky yellow or blue. They're, they're great in terms of the shape, but the color is just always monochrome. The first thing that blew me away when I saw your technology was that we are talking about photorealistic. You've got the, you know, everything is in complete color. It's like a photograph that's become real. <laughs> and that's astonishing because that's not something you see in 3D printing. So you're not doing the same 3D printing most companies are doing. You're doing something very special. Yeah, there is uh, lots of different methods of 3D printing available. Um, typically what we tend to see in the media is, uh, is consumer level home uh, 3D printing, which is one color plastic. We use a full color 3D printing process, industrial process, which um, gives us just amazing flexibility to get great detail, but also full and true lifelike color. And the ones we're seeing here in studio are not plastic. Yeah, we've got a nice little invasion of 3D uh, printed animals here. And the ones we're seeing in the studio, I mean, it's, it's astonishing the, the range of, of detail. So when I look at these figurines, my first thought is that someone is sitting there with a, a, a brush and is sort of hand painting that mm -hmm. kind of detail. That's the detail you normally would see, and that's not the case. These are coming out of your machines like this. That, that is correct. However, we do hand paint these models, but we do it digitally. And the, uh, the beautiful thing of working on a computer screen versus working with a paintbrush is, of course, the undo button, which helps, right. uh, oh, yeah. helps a lot. <laughs> so, and, and then here's the, the, the cool part, is that you're all, as you mentioned, it's an emotional process. You're getting wonderful stories from a lot of these uh, pet uh, parents and companion owners. And I like the fact that before you hit print, you actually reach out to these people and you send them on their computers a little representation of what the figurine is going to look. And then you give them a chance 
to suggest little tweaks, little changes. Little we do. We encourage interaction with our customers because we want everybody to be blown away. And what we what we often tell people, especially for uh, deceased animals, that if you open the box and you don't get a tear in your eye, let us know and send it back. I like that. Just to be clear, you know, if you open the box and it doesn't have that magical little something, that connection. If it's not your pet. Right. You're saying that they can send it back and you're going to, you know, again, go through the process of making tweaks and get it right. Absolutely. It's very rare that that happens because of the collaborative process that we have with our customers, but we want them to be 100% perfect. This is a this is a keepsake. It's a work of art, and it has to be it has to be perfect. And for it you. means a lot to your team of artists too. I mean, they they have a vested interest in making those people happy. The artists get incredible feedback from our clients on the amazing work that they do, and we get uh, notes all the time. Almost every customer will send us some uh, some positive comments about uh, the emotions that their model evoked, or or the comments that other people uh, mention when they see it. Now, I want to also we, we we've talked dogs obviously there are tons of pet dog owners but there's a vast range of pets <laughs> that you've been printing yes we've uh, done dogs cats horses uh, turtles lizards the lizards snakes. are creepy because lizards don't move a lot so you can't tell sometimes if that's a real lizard Right. I'm expecting it to move, you know what I mean? Because they, they can stand there forever. Sure, and, and you know, <laughs> the thing about lizards is they are that small. So, you yeah. know, it's a little different when you've got uh, a Dalmatian and you print it off. And how big are these figurines, roughly? Uh, they range anywhere from 4 inches up to 12 to 14 inches, depending wow. on what our customers mm -hmm. want. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. And you can, I mean, there's no rules. It's not like you're only printing certain pets. If somebody has a, a guinea pig... Or they, you know, uh, yeah. sugar gliders. Do you know what those are? No, what is a oh, sugar glider? Kind of like little uh, Asian squirrels. They've been very popular as Who pets. do you know that has an Asian slider or whatever? A sugar, sugar glider. glider. Oh, God. <laughs> Sugar glider, Google uh, Google them up. It's kind of in the same range as say a chinchilla, if you know what a oh, chinchilla. Oh, they're cute. Yeah, that kind of thing. So I mean, you're you're fine with somebody sort of saying, look, I've got this unique pet. Would you be able to take that on as a challenge? Of, of course we are. We we haven't seen a sugar glider at, at this point yet, but we did uh, recently do a rescue turtle, a turtle that had been run over and kind of oh. squashed on the shell. So oh. he survived, and we uh, got some pictures, and we managed to to make a really realistic looking looking model. When you say no rules, Chris, uh, that's exactly right. If you want your dog wearing a, hat, a top hat doing a tap dance, we can absolutely make that happen. Yeah, you were telling me a story, because uh, you do cats, of course, that somebody yeah. actually had uh, a particular request about the nose of a cat? Yeah, the, this uh, this particular animal liked to uh, nose around underneath the uh, the bed of the owner, and the owner specifically requested a, a dusty finish on the model. And <laughs> like a little she was dust bunny again. on the end yes, of the nose? Yes, exactly. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really cool. So I, I, I'm sure a lot of people are now screaming at our radio going, well, how much? Uh, so what is the, the service that you're offering? Well, the typical prices range from uh, starting at $250 for one model of one individual animal. Uh, a lot of our work is in the initial artwork. So once we draw the animal uh, once, we can pose it. So when we sell multiple poses of the same dog, uh, it's $500 for three, and that's like a four to six inch size. As you get bigger, the price goes up because oh, there's a tremendous amount more work that goes into uh, detailing a large model. Right, and that's actually a very good price. I mean, $250 mm -hmm. starting. Uh, you know, in the collectible figurine market, you think oh, of yeah. sideshow collectibles, Hot Toys, uh, Phil Tippett Studios, all their stuff is like 300 400 and that's for like mass-produced Spider-Man, Batman, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, you think of the cost of going out and having a professional photographer come in and take your portrait. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Just the sitting fee D is $250. Totally. <laughs> yeah. So that's fantastic. And your packages are kind of creative in that if you spend more, if you buy like three figurines, then you're offering multiple poses, multiple yep. variations. Absolutely, and it's uh, again fully customizable. Whatever whatever your imagination can come up with, we can we can manage to create. I think it's important for your listeners to understand that this is a, a one of a kind work of art. When we make a model of your dog, we're not making that we're not using that dog for other people's models. Uh, every single one is is fully unique and fully special, and that's that's the real thing that that drives the joy in people. Uh, you know, we are often asked, "Do you have a particular breed?" And when we tell people they can make a model of their own dog, uh, they're just so excited because a lot, especially mixed breeds or, or dogs with significant personality, you just can't find that at the Hallmark store. No, well, and here's the thing. So I, I picture, I mean, every workplace that I go into, uh, people have little tiny figurines and things around the monitors and their desks. And so there's a world of difference between coming in and just seeing a figurine of a basset hound and coming in and seeing your 
fast and happen. I love the idea that you might have a, a, a bad meeting and you come back to your desk a little frustrated and there's Mr. Whiskers peeking at you from out behind the monitor, you know, looking at you like, hey, what's up? Is everything okay? Or the fact that you can have your muffin guarded by your golden retriever and making sure nobody else touches your muffin at work. I love that idea. Well, no one should touch your muffin at work. Nobody should touch my muffin at work. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, and Tiny Tuesday. I mean, we've been tweeting little adventures of some of your figurines online, and I can picture how people are going to take their cat, their dog, and go off and photograph and do these mm -hmm. little tiny, tiny stories. People I follow on Twitter are already doing that with like Lego and plush animal toys. So it's pretty cool. I, I love the potential for where this is uh, going to go. Well, I'll tell you what. You want to go to petprince3d.com, and yep. you want to order yourself your pet. So what she said is the promo code 15% off, which is significant, and you yeah. will have uh, your you want to take care of, You want to take advantage of that and get, like, the three-pose package. Oh, yeah. No <laughs> kidding. No kidding. Oh, my goodness. These figurines are fantastic. We've got them up on our shelves here. I've got a little beagle looking at me rather wanly. He's kind of cute. Uh, and I love the idea that you can take your, your childhood companion and bring them back into your lives and send them off and have little adventures and mm -hmm. tweet about them and photo them. That's going to be fantastic. And we're really excited because this is a new Canadian uh, business and it's world leading. I don't know of any other company in the world that's doing this. We're excited to follow you over the next couple of weeks. We're going to check in with you next week mm -hmm. and try to get the reaction of some people who have done this Absolutely. to see what their experience is. I'm excited for that. Yep, and uh, all of our social media as well, if you follow what she said, 167, on Twitter and Facebook, you'll see that we've been posting all kinds of wonderful pictures, because that will give you that visual you're looking for to see exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, because uh, so here's the thing about your 3D printing that's different from anything else I've seen. The level of expression. Yeah. And that was the first thing when I, I saw your, your studio that you captured. Because I've had myself scanned and printed by other, um, you know, hobbyists, and you know, it's usually a blank face. I'm yes. looking like I'm a mannequin. And your technology captures the emotional expression of these little tiny animals. It's fantastic. That's it. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure having you on board. Click the channel subscribe button for full-length interviews and more from What She Said here on YouTube.